So learning about color and color theory. Most of you are familiar with the color wheel. Color wheel is something that we learned about when we were in elementary school. It shows how the all the colors interact with each other, where they're placed along uh, this wheel of color. The first colors that we talk about are primary colors. They are yellow, blue, and red. These colors are the most pure colors and cannot be broken down into separate colors, therefore they're first ones. In theory, all other colors are made from these three colors. Once we mix the primary colors together, we get secondary colors. So for purple, we need to mix red and blue together. To make orange, we mix red and yellow. And to get green, we mix yellow and blue. For tertiary colors, we mix the primary and the secondary color together. When we talk about tertiary colors, we always list the primary color first. So red-orange, red-purple are tertiary colors. Yellow-orange and yellow-green are tertiary colors. And then finally, blue-green and blue-purple. So they're the colors that are in between the primary and secondary colors. We also have to talk about neutral colors. This is a little bit different when we're talking about in terms of um, art versus science. In art, white is the absence of color. And in science, and when we're talking about light, it is actually all colors together. But when we're talking about paint or color pencil or crayon, we're talking about the absence of color. And then black for art are all colors equally mixed together. If you try to mix all of your colors together um, and you don't get black, it is for either two reasons you mixed unequal portions of the colors, or the manufacturer did not create a pure color. Therefore, you end up not getting a pure black color. Gray is white plus black, and brown are the complementary colors mixed together. Complementary colors are across from each other on the color wheel. So when you mix yellow and purple together, you get a brown. A red and green together, you get a different brown. And blue and orange, you still get a different brown. This is a great way to still use a color, figure out how to neutralize it so that it's not so intense. So if you want to use a yellow, for example, in a painting, um, or a drawing, but the yellow is too intense, you can neutralize it, adding its complementary color. And again, that would be purple. So if you layer purple in with your yellow, you would still have a yellowish tone, but it would start to neutralize into a more yellowy brown. For color combinations. There are different ways that you can use colors with other colors and create different feelings within your artwork. Color wheel split in half can be split into warm colors and cool colors. Warm colors are typically reds, oranges, and yellows, and cool colors are typically greens, blues, and purples. When using warm and cool colors, warm colors tend to advance or come forward in a piece of art whereas cool colors seem to recede or go back into the distance. So thinking about where you're placing your warm colors and cool colors is really important in how your objects or your space feels within your artwork. Here are two examples of compositions that are using all warm colors 
and all cool colors. And obviously they have completely different feelings based on color choices. Analogous colors are three colors next to each other on the color wheel. These color combinations tend to be very harmonious. They feel really good together. So when you combine or use the three different colors, again, that are next to each other on the color wheel, you get a very pleasing, satisfactory color combination and composition. Here are two examples. So we see red, orange, and yellow orange, and we see green, yellow green, and blue green together. And again, they feel very good. They're easy to look at. They're very pleasing. Um, and we feel that sense of harmony when we're able to look at these analogous colors together. Once again, complementary colors are colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. Um, and here we see that red and green are complementary, blue and orange are complementary, and purple and yellow are complementary. But if we look carefully, we also see yellow green is a complement to red purple. When you use complementary colors together in a composition, because of the intensity of the color, they tend to fight for the viewer's attention. So using these colors are very eye-catching. And we often see complementary colors in logos as well as uh, sport team um, jerseys because it's extremely eye-catching. Here are two examples of artworks that use complementary colors. And again, we see the intensity of the colors together. Um, they both are fighting for our visual attention. So our eye keeps moving around from the orange to the blue and the green to the red. This is a great way to keep the viewer's eye moving throughout your composition. Split complementary colors are a combination of three colors. But instead of going directly across from one color on the color wheel, you go to the two colors next to what would be the direct opposite. So in this example, we see red orange and its split complement is green and blue instead of blue green. This just creates a little bit more dynamic use of complementary colors and adding a little bit subtle touch so it's not such an extreme um, pairing. These are really great examples of split complementary color use. Monochromatic colors are one color plus all of its tints, tones, and shades. Tints are the color plus white. Tones are the color plus gray. Shades are a color plus black. And obviously you get different degree, degrees of tints, tones, and shades depending on how much of the white, gray, or black you add to a color. Using tints, tones, and shades helps to create realism within a piece of art and it helps to create form. So it gives objects three dimensions because we see value on objects, lights, mediums, and dark values, and tints, tones, and shades allows us to do this within color. You can create artwork that's all monochromatic. So here are two examples. One is purple, and we see tints of purple, tones of purple, shades of purple, and the other is green tints of green, tones of green, and shades of green. And these create a very unified piece of art. So we're not necessarily dealing with a lot of color, obviously. We're dealing with one color and all of its tints, tones, and shades and values. Um, so it allows us to really focus on the composition, focus on the emotion, or any other detail. Colors also have emotions. There are positive emotions that go along with all the colors, as well as 
negative emotions. Uh, every color, for example, red has a connection with an emotion, or we understand it to represent something. So red, um, excitement, strength, love, energy, um, are very typical of what we consider to be emotions of that color. And there's a variety of different emotions that we link with color. Not only that we consciously link, but subconsciously as well. Studies have shown that if you paint certain rooms a particular color, it changes the mood or the feeling of the people within the room. The room. Uh, so a long time ago, uh, we used to paint uh, guidance rooms in pink and purples and blues because these were calming colors. Again, there are also a lot of negative colors that go along with these, um, or negative emotions that go along with these colors. So when we look at red, if you go to a deeper, darker red, that can mean um, enraged feelings. If it's a really intense red, it can mean an angry feeling. Uh, so you have to be really careful what tone or intensity of the color you decide to use. If you're using yellow, um, which is a typically happy and very optimistic color, it can mean terrified if it's looking like it's a more brown or a greeny yellow. So again, you have to be really careful um, with what choices you're choosing if you're trying to represent particular emotion. Advertisers and marketing is um, really keen on understanding emotional color. So you'll see here in this graphic that all of these logos are placed within a very particular um, color scheme that help to represent the color itself, but also it helps us to represent the, the emotion that we see. So if we're looking at, for example, um, this yellowish um, phone, which is a little, it's a warm yellow, we see um, Subway, we see Best Buy, we see McDonald's, and this is linked with optimism, happiness. Um, friendliness, we see uh, Payless, Fanta, Crush, and excitement and bold, Coca-Cola, Target. So there's a wide variety of color choices. But again, these are really linked with the emotion of the color. And so being very careful about your color choices is important because that will convey a particular emotion within your composition. So color is fun. Color is um, a great way to add interest and dynamic to your composition, but be careful and mindful of the color choices that you have because it can make or break your entire piece.